What? Uh, uh, missed it. Ah. Hey, welcome to Storyland. This week we're talking about commitment while we take a look at the story of a man who said something important. Like the most important thing ever. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about commitment which is making a plan and putting it into practice. Speaking of practice, oof, I need to stay limber. Oof. 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 Yeah. I'm getting tired just watching you. Oof. What exactly are you training for? Yeah. Well, it's an ancient sport I've just discovered. You have to have super speedy reflexes, amazing hand-eye coordination, and top-notch motor skills. Ooh, that sounds intense. How do you play? You need a ball and these like pronged metal spiky things. Yikes, dangerous. Oh, it has its risks. Stand back. Behold. Jax? You're training to play Jax? I thought you said it was an ancient sport. It is, my parents used to play it. Anyways, it's harder than it looks. Watch. So the trick is to bounce the ball high enough to collect it or some of these, but not too high. Otherwise, it, it, hey, wh where'd it go? Uh, now here, look, can, uh, can you help me look for it? Did it bounce over? I think it bounced uh, over here. All right, Lola, yeah, look that way. I'll look over here. Oh, no. Where's the ball? Not over here either. Ah, I think it's going. Sorry. Man, how am I supposed to train? Let's make a new one. Like make an actual bouncy ball. I'll coach you through it. All right, let's make it. Today, we're gonna make a bouncy ball. What color do oh. you want it to be, Zeke? Uh, blue. No, no, uh, red. Uh, wait, wait, uh, purple, oh, okay. purple? How about a multicolored one? Perfect, let's get the ingredients. Okay. Hold that, thank you. Uh, uh, okay, step back. Thank you. All right, it's all here. We've got water. Check. Uh, borax. Check. Next is glue. Check. After that, we have the cornstarch. Check. And food coloring. Check. Oh, and since we're using lots of colors, we'll need a container for each one. Okay, and then something to mix with. Ah, check. All right, ready to make this? Let's roll. Get it? Because it's a, it's a ball. Um, yeah. You know, this looks pretty complicated. It's probably gonna take way too long. I can just find it. Get your head in the game, athlete. We can handle this curveball. Come on, let's go. You're right, you're right. You're absolutely right. Let's okay. do this. First step, mix a teaspoon of borax with a quarter cup of water. One for each color. Go, hurry up, come on. Okay. Okay. Start. Okay, check. Now, add a teaspoon of glue to each container. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's clear or white. Nope, both work, but good question. Now, I like to be on my A game. Keep going, keep going. You're doing good. Yes, I see the improvement. Good job, Zeke. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I bet the cornstarch is next. Ah, good call. Add a quarter teaspoon of cornstarch to each bowl of glue, then we add the food coloring and mix it really well. Game on. Come on. Very hesitant. There you go, there you go, there you go. Hey. <clears throat> now what? Food coloring. Oh, right. Food coloring. Food coloring, put the food coloring in. I, I, there we go, I, come I, on, food coloring, food coloring. It. Mm -hmm. Mix it. Mix mm -hmm. it. Are you mixing? I'm mixing. Are you mixing with maximum mixing effort? Mixing is happening right now. Maximum effort mixing? It's harder than I can. Okay. All right, you're done mixing. Okay. All, right. All right. This next part will take a little time. You got it in you? Put me in, coach. Okay. Let's see what we got. All right. 
Pour each container one at a time into the borax and water mixture. Okay. Now, 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 no, now, no, no, now. Right. Hey. Scrape. I'm scraping. Scrape. Now it's not mixed. What, what are we thinking now? Ooh. Scrape. Very drippy. Now mush, 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 mush. Three, two, done. Okay. All right. So that was the mix, that was the mush. That's check. Good job, good job, man. But the game's not over. We're almost at the finish line, all right? Now smash all the colors okay, okay, together okay. and form them into one ball, okay? Go, go, form, form, smash, form. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Make oh. that ball, make the ball. Oh. We need the bouncy ball, make the ball. Whoa. Yep, I'm oh. rolling, Whoa, come on. I'm rolling. Come on, don't give up, don't give up. I'm like three. Come on. Two. One. Done. There you go. There you go, Z. Good job. So, nice work, Z. You know, those last 15 seconds were a touch and go for a moment. Oh, yeah. um, but what was going through your head? You know, it was it was tough, uh, but we didn't give up. We we took a chance and it paid off. It was totally worth it, and we made a bouncy ball. A bouncy ball. Wow, look at that. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Well said. Speaking of speaking, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Matthew. Matthew is one of the four gospels that tells about the life of Jesus. For three years, Jesus traveled from town to town, sharing about God's kingdom and healing people. As they traveled, Jesus' closest followers saw him do amazing things, like walk on water. Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and turned them into food for more than 5,000 people. He healed the sick and even brought a young girl back to life. It was clear Jesus was special, but everyone had a different idea about who Jesus really is. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. I'm Erica. Just like us, Jesus needed space. One day he traveled north with his friends to the city of Caesarea Philippi, perhaps to be in a place where he wasn't known as well and there would be fewer crowds. The town itself was named after the Roman ruler Caesar Augustus, who was considered a god, like all the other Caesars. Many people in that area worshiped other false gods too. Jesus knew about this. He also knew all the questions people were asking about him. So Jesus went to the heart of the matter by asking his closest friends an incredibly important question. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Hold on a second. Son of Man? What's that all about? Jesus was actually referring to a vision the prophet Daniel had about the Messiah. Daniel used the name Son of Man to describe the rescuer God would send. Jesus wanted to hear whether his closest friends believed he was the rescuer or Messiah. Some people are saying that you're John the Baptist. Or maybe Elijah. I've heard people say that you could even be Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. But what about you? Who do you say I am? Sure, Jesus' friends had seen him do incredible things. They had to be thinking, this is it. What if Jesus is God's rescuer? But it was a big leap to go from just thinking it to saying it. Simon Peter was known for taking bold steps, and he was the first to answer. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon. No mere human showed this to you. My Father in heaven showed it to you. Here's what I tell you. You are Peter. On this rock, I will build my church. Okay, this is some wordplay. See, the name Peter means rock. And to add to that, Caesarea Philippi was known for a large rock formation. So it's quite possible Jesus and his friends were looking at a giant solid rock. It was a word picture. In speaking up, Peter had shown how strong his faith was and Jesus promised to build his entire future church on that faith. Now, Jesus knew not everyone was ready to hear that he is God's rescuer, so Jesus told his friends not to tell anyone that he is the Messiah. 
See, some people wanted Jesus to be a king to lead an uprising against the ruling Romans. That could have caused trouble with the Roman government. Jesus knew it wasn't time for that. For now, it was enough that Peter had been courageous to speak the truth about who Jesus is. The end. Peter was a pretty strong guy. Like a rock, clearly. Yep, Peter was all in. So what's our part in the story? <laughs> Jesus' friends had a lot of questions. They weren't sure what to think, but Jesus got the conversation started. He challenged them to speak up and talk about it. That's something we can practice too. You mean telling people who Jesus is? Absolutely. But it's more than just that. You can practice talking about God as part of everyday conversation. With your family. And your friends. That's right. Sometimes talking about what God is up to feels easy. And sometimes it seems a little harder. But choosing to talk about God reminds you to keep your eyes open for what God is doing. And get other people to see it too. You can share about the way God helped you to stay calm on a, a big test. Or when you see an incredible sunset, you can talk about God's amazing imagination. And if your friend gets upset, you can remind your friend that God is always with us, especially when we're lonely or sad. Show up for your friends and family and be willing to listen too. The more you're there for them, the more they'll be open to hearing from you about God. <laughs> Just takes a little practice. And commitment. You got it. This has been awesome. Thanks for having me, and see you next time. <laughs> Bye. So, here's the thing. Practice talking about God. Share what you've seen. And you can talk about it while you do what you love to do. Hey, I've got my jacks. And I got our brand new bouncy ball. Perfect. Hey, let's talk about God while we play jacks. Awesome. I see God in ocean waves. I see God when new leaves grow or when God helps me with a tricky math test. Or when I need help to make a wise choice. Oh. Ready to admit defeat? Never, I'm committed to this. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. All right, you wanna keep playing? Yeah, but Where's the, we need the ball. Oh. Uh. Did we lose that one too? <sighs> we might have to make another one. All right, coach. All right. You go get the stuff, I'll go get my whistle.